Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRoud. In this episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the April amplifier and oscillator issue. As a reminder, the cover feature is about improving oscillator phase noise with passive vibration isolation and accelerometer-based vibration compensation. It's written by authors from Wenzel, and they are part of Quantic Electronics now. So using both of these techniques together, they were able to significantly improve the phase noise for high performance applications of oscillators. So we covered the technical features last time. Gary, what do we have for product features? Well, in the product features, we have two of them. Um, first, interestingly enough, to support the growth of commercial space applications, particularly in low Earth orbit, Analog Devices has developed a special screening for commercial space and they've used it to release two of their beamforming RFICs for commercial space applications. Each one of the ICs provides 16 channels of amplitude and phase control, and one covers 17 to 22 gigahertz, the other 27 and a half to 31 gigahertz. Then our second product feature from Zadar Labs, they've released a software-defined imaging radar that they call Z Prime, that combines RF silicon with a software-defined architecture. And they say it produces a point cloud very similar to LiDAR, which will fulfill the radar requirements for fully autonomous vehicle operation. So a lot of progress in the radar space these days. How about the tech briefs, Pat? Yeah, I was very impressed with the Zader Lab sensor. They're making a lot of progress in all these companies, especially a lot of the startups. Yeah. Well, for uh, tech briefs, we had a 0.8 to 3.2 gigahertz, one kilowatt pulse solid state dual mode power amplifier from Exodus Advanced Communications. We also had an 18 gigahertz high power electromechanical switch family for EW applications for RLC electronics, a low power, highly integrated ultra wideband SOC from MK Semi and a non-signaling RF test platform for validation and production test from NOFS Technologies in Germany. So uh, turning to the news, there was a really significant release from the U.S. National Science Foundation. They announced a new investment of $37 million, and that's aimed at the development of intelligent, resilient, and reliable next-generation networks, and they call it NextG. And this investment is called RINGS, got to have an acronym for everything, and that's short for Resilient and Intelligent Next Generation Systems. It's going to be a public-private partnership that focuses on accelerating research to increase the competitiveness of the U.S. in the next generation networking and computing technologies and also ensure the security and resilience of these next generation technologies and infrastructure. The RINGS program is NSS single largest effort to date in engaging public and private partners in a joint research program. The private sector partners include Apple, Ericsson, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, Nokia, Qualcomm, and VMware. And the government partners include the U.S. Department of Defense Office of Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering and also NIST. And then there's a whole bunch of universities involved in this, so it'll be a really big effort and I'll be talking to Erickson more about this subject in an upcoming podcast so you can learn more. And finally, Gary and I had a briefing with AMD and Xilinx about their release of the Versa Premium Series with AI engines optimized for signal processing intensive applications in the aerospace and defense, advanced communications, and test and measurement markets. This product delivers a four times increase in signal processing capacity compared to the last generation it has up to 9 terabits per second serial bandwidth and offers reduced uh, swap through heterogeneous integration using power optimized integration of hardened ASIC like cores. And these are like 100G and 600G Ethernet cores. They also have 400G high speed crypto engines, DDR memory controller, and integrated PCI Gen 5 blocks. Wow, that is a lot on one device. Very impressive. What did you think of this release, Gary? Oh, it's incredible. Uh, amazing how much processing power you can put in a package. And actually, it's not that small of a package, but still very, uh, very usable. So also in the news, you were mentioning uh, government awards. Uh, NASA has awarded six contracts, just under $300 million, that will ultimately replace TDRS, which is their tracking and data relay satellites 
That's a constellation that NASA uses for communications. And the awards went to SpaceX, Jeff Bezos's project Kuiper, Viasat, Inmarsat, the U.S. subsidiary of SES, and also the U.S. subsidiary of Telesat. And NASA plans a five-year development and demonstration project with each company investing at least as much as NASA is investing. And then maybe by the end of the decade, they will actually end up a similar public-private partnership to replace TDRS. And then one other news item, AT&T has requested uh, two experimental FCC licenses here in Austin, where I am today, so it can research new capabilities for 5G advanced and 6G. And the licenses cover three frequency bands, 5.9 to 8.4, 10.7 to 15.35, and 92 to 100 gigahertz. So they're starting to look out there at the... Uh, very high millimeter wave bands. Well, it's great in the news that there's a lot of investment coming from the government because I think that's been lacking in previous generations, so it's great to hear. So turning to events, the uh, 22nd Annual IEEE Wireless and Microwave Technology Conference, or WAMICON 2022, will be taking place next week in Clearwater Beach, Florida, and so that's April 27th and 28th. The conference will address up-to-date multidisciplinary research needs and interdisciplinary aspects of wireless and RF technology. The central theme is waves through air and space, and the program includes oral and poster presentations as well as tutorials and special sessions, so uh, don't miss that if you can attend. So a few comments about the European Microwave Conference from my side. Um, I thought it felt like a real conference and exhibition despite the fact that there was lower attendance and everyone I spoke with there said the event really exceeded their expectations going in, so that was good news. In terms of market trends, I saw uh, quite a few test and measurement developments that will enable research in the sub-terahertz bands. As we mentioned, there's a lot of activity starting up there. And then the other thing that struck me, probably just new to me, is the complexity of the test and validation of automotive radar and integrating it with other sensors for ad advanced driving assistance systems. We talked to uh, several companies like DSpace that uh, are doing tests and simulation and validation, and it's really an incredible problem. What did you think, Pat? Yeah, definitely. I was very impressed with all those test companies, and there's a lot of partnerships with them working together. Uh, you saw Form Factor and Keysight and VDI all putting together their system for a 220 gigahertz on wafer probing system. So the cooperation between them is uh, really impressive, too. Yeah, and I think you've finished publishing all the videos from European Microwave. All set. We have uh, 30 videos covering the exhibition, both interviews and demos, and we also have the three defense, space, and security industry sessions, and that's all online now, so you can check that out in our video platform. So if you weren't able to make European Microwave, you can binge watch it, basically. <laughs> yes, you can. And that's it for this episode. We want to thank our sponsor, RFMW, a technical distributor that represents the leading RF Microwave products and companies. RFMW has a deep technical team to help designers find the best solution for a design problem. So for your next project, start with RFMW. Mm -hmm. And it was great to see Joel and Steve at European Microwave. They had a very large booth area representing their companies. Thanks everyone for joining us today and watch for our next episode of Frequency Matters.